All right, well, I'm going to be out for a couple more days than I thought, so I'm going to go ahead and give you Chapter 5's notes, and again, hopefully you can watch these later if you need them, or you can call me at home if you run into questions. We are starting here Chapter 5, 5.1, and what we're really going to start with is properties of inequality. I know we've already done properties of equality. It's a little bit different, but not much. Please, again, make sure that you're writing everything that I am writing on the board. So we're going to start with, for all numbers A, B, and C that belong to the real numbers, again, don't forget, this symbol over here means for all letters A, B, and C, which represent values that belong to the real numbers, we have several different properties when it comes to inequalities. The first, which is one that you'll be using that is new, is the three possibilities property. Now remember, properties as well as postulates can be on your theorem and postulate list. Another word for property is postulate. So if the book says what postulate is applied here, it might also be referring to a property. The three possibilities property property says for two numbers or values A and B we have three possibilities either A is greater than B B is great less than excuse me B is greater than A or A is equal to B three possibilities one of those three has to be true. Now then we get into properties that are a little bit more familiar, such as the transitive property of inequality, which you can imagine is very similar to the transitive property we've already had. Our transitive property said if A equals B, B equals C, then A equals C. Here we're going to say if A is greater than B, and B is greater than C, then A must be greater than C. It's transitive. It's less, it's less like substitution and more like transitive because substitution really means you're replacing something with something else. Transitive is more flowing. A greater than B, B greater than C, therefore A greater than C. We also have, again, very similar to what we had before, addition property of inequality, which says if A is greater than B, then if you add the same thing to both sides, A plus C will also be greater than B plus C. Very similar to the property we already have. If we have addition, then we probably have subtraction, exactly. The subtraction property of inequality, almost identical, just says if A is greater than B, then A minus C is greater than B minus C. Now the what difference happens here when we talk about multiplication and so addition, subtraction, very similar. Multiplication changes just a little bit. The multiplication property of inequality says if A is greater than B and C is greater than zero, then A times C is greater than B times C. What you need to think about here is why does C have to be bigger than zero? Well, if C were zero, then you have zero greater than zero, which isn't true when you multiply. And if C is less than zero, then you get a negative value. And in a negative value, when you multiply both sides of an inequality, what happens to the sign? Exactly, it switches. So we want to make sure 
that if we're multiplying both sides of the inequality, it's going to be something positive greater than zero. And the same thing is also true of division, for exactly the same reasons. So the division property of inequality, and I don't know why I'm writing it differently each time, it just seems like it's working. If A is greater than B, and C is greater than zero, then A over C is greater than B over C. I do apologize if it seems like I'm rushing a little, and I know the lessons are a little shorter than they normally are. Quite honestly, I'm trying to get through this so that I can get home, get back into bed not too long. And when I get back, I'll be able to answer a lot more questions. Once again, the easiest way to get your questions answered is to call me at home, 332-5086. The last th thing we're going to have today is actually a theorem, and you'll be proving this in your assignment. And it says this. It's called the addition theorem of inequalities. What's different from this as opposed to the um, property? The property just says if you add the same thing to both sides. The theorem kind of takes that a step further and deals with two inequalities and combines them. So what I mean is we have this. If A is greater than B and C is greater than D. So we have two separate inequalities where in one situation A is bigger than D, the other C is bigger than D. If we add the two larger ones, they have to be bigger than the two smaller ones. I know this makes sense, but that's why it's a theorem and that's why you'll prove it. Let's do an example just numerically. Let's say I had 5 greater than 2 and 3 greater than 1. Using this theorem, it would say then that 5 plus 3 must be greater than 2 plus 1, which, as you see, is true. Now, is this a proof? No, of course not. It's just one situation. But you will be proving it actually using, I believe, in this assignment. So let's look back a little bit at all we've gotten so far. go all the way back to the top, and we start with a new thing, which is three possibilities property. So if you're comparing two measurements, you're immediately probably going to look at using three possibilities properties. The rest of these are very similar, transitive, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. The difference of multiplication and division is C has to be greater than zero. Then we go down, we have the addition theorem of inequality, which compares two inequalities and what happens when you add them. And the very last theorem today, which is really important, you're going to be using this any time you show something's bigger than what makes it up. And that is the whole greater than parts. theorem. Really important. What it says is a whole unit, a whole thing is bigger than all the parts that make it up. And let me show you how this works. I'm trying to get this out of the way because I want you to see it very clearly. If A is greater than zero and B is greater than zero, and A plus B is equal to C. So you've got two non-negative values, and they add up to this other value. Then the thing they add up to has to be greater than either of them. Think of it this way. 
a whole pizza is bigger than each of its pieces. Let's say we've got angles. Make sure you're writing all of this down. Let's say this is angle L. Yeah, let's call this angle A, B, C, for lack of a better name at this moment. Call these angles 1 and 2. We know that angle 1 plus angle 2 has to equal angle A, B, C. Uh, what tells us two angles add up to a bigger angle? Theorem 2. Since 1 and 2 add up to A, B, C, and since 1 and 2 have to be greater than 0 because they're angles, then, let's go ahead and throw an if in there, angle A, B, C is greater than angle 1, and angle A, B, C is bigger than angle 2. The whole is greater than its parts. Now remember, if you're ever saying, why can you measure an angle or make an angle a measure, that's going to go back to the protractor postulate. The protractor postulate says you can measure angles, you can create angles of a certain measure. Okay, so that's 5.1. Not a real difficult section. Um, again, if I went a little quick, go back, look at it, make sure you understand the notes. Not going to be real difficult. For the assignment for tonight, you're going to have page 186, 1 through 12, 13 to 19, 26 to 31, 37 to 40, 45, and 46. Do not skip the proofs. That's the most important part. Those are the ones that are really getting you. So remember, go from 1 to 12, then go to 13, go from 13 to 19, then go to 26, to 31, 37 to 40, 45 to 46. You got any questions, once again, give me a holler. Make sure when you're grading your assignments that you are only correcting with a red pen. There is no reason to have a pencil in your hand. Thanks much. We've got one more video lesson, and then I should be back the next week.